This is my Porsche 1997 911 Type 993 Carrera S and this is the fourth in the series documenting my ownership of this car and this video is documenting the upgrade from the standard hollow turbo wheels to the BBS LMs. Hi guys and welcome back to Rich Reviews. Apologies for wearing sunglasses, we're in a glorious summer's day here in the UK and unfortunately if I'm looking into the sun all the time then I'm going to be squinting which isn't a great look. So today we're going to be talking about the wheels and my upgrade from the Turbo Twist hollow wheels which came as standard with my 993 Carrera S and the upgrade to the BBS LMs. These are the BBS LMs. They're not a proper three-stage split rims as a lot of people think they are. They're actually in two pieces, so they're a two-piece wheel. Now the history behind me upgrading the car was partly down to my friends across the pond in America. They helped me a lot with, and first of all, wanting the wheels because all their cars have got these wheels or a lot of their cars have these wheels over in America. And to understand actually how I would get this standard and this level of fitment so that it looked the same as their cars and it, it provided this stance. Now, first of all, I researched how I could get hold of these wheels. These wheels are BBS LMs. The LM stands for Le Mans. So actually the full name is BBS Le Mans, the Le Mans model. Now these wheels are 18 by 8.5 on the front and 18 by 11 on the rear. Obviously the rear are a lot wider and then you obviously fit the rubber to match. There's no, there's no spaces on these wheels. There's no need for spaces. And the reason for that, or one of the reasons for that, is because these wheels are what's called reverse. Now, what is reversing? Slam it in reverse. Don't look in your mirrors. Whiz it in. Say, hey, how are you? Okay, reversing is a technique that you can use for BBS LMs. Maybe you can use it for some other wheels. I'm not sure. I haven't researched those other areas, but I know it's the way that you can convert the BBS LM wheels so that you have more dish. In effect, this area, comes out a little bit more so that you have a wider stance, a wider fitment in the wheel. In effect, the wheels fill out the arches a lot better to this sort of standard, as you can see, especially on the rear of the car. The first stage in getting this look for the wheels and to the fitment in the arches was to procure the wheels. Now that in itself was quite a bit of work. Had to research high and wide the best company to import the wheels. Now I found out that the actual best price for the wheels from actual, was actually from the leading UK importer, which is called Rimstyle. So first of all, ordered the wheels from Rimstyle. They had to come in and they come in in, in parts. So I believe that they're then fitted together at Rimstyle. Um, so that they all they're fitted together at um, BBS. I think BBS actually procured a part separately and then they fit the they actually fit the wheels together. And then once the wheels arrive, what you have to actually do is they're actually all QA'd and all fitted together and all the, the nuts are all talked up, etc. And all, all QA'd um, ready to actually be fitted to the car. But then what you have to do to get this this style of fitment, this reversed fitment, you have to then dismantle this section of the wheel. So you have to undo all these bolts around the wheel. And then standard fitment is that this center section is the two piece wheel. So it, in, the, the two pieces encompass this center section and this outer rim. Now, when these wheels arrive in from rim style, this center piece is actually bolted on the outside. To reverse mount these wheels, you've got to undo all these bolts, remove this from the front of the rim. This is the rim, this is the center. And when you do that, you expose this front face. Now this front face isn't polished. So it means that um, you've then got to get that polished so it's the same standard as the rest of the rim. And also this rim section is lacquered. So you're into a situation there where you've bought a brand new wheel and you've got to dismantle it, in effect break it <laughs> from a brand new q wheel to get the look. And you've obviously got to be confident that this is what you want to do and make sure you do it correctly because if you damage it and if you do it wrong, you're voiding the warranty. So you dismantle these bolts, you take off the center from the outside where it is originally fitted, and then before you can fit the wheel back together, you then have to find a manufacturer who will then polish the whole rim section, including this new exposed face, 
to bring it to this sort of standard. That in itself is another level of research. I used a company called S&T Electroplate. They did an excellent job as you can tell. And once you get the rims back from being polished, obviously the centers don't need to be polished. The centers are still lacquered with the original lacquer. Once you get the rims back from being polished, then you have the painstaking part of actually bolting the wheel back together, but obviously with this inside the lip, inside the rim. I think these are also called lips in, um, in America. You, you bolt the center on the inside and you have to put these bolts back in all along very very carefully remember this is highly polished you're putting a socket potentially onto these bolts and if you get that socket if you miss with a socket you're going to damage this bright work and it's going to be noticeable and my wheels were put back together by the by my mechanic the reversing was done by my mechanic um, and he did a fantastic job on on rebuilding the wheels and there's not one mark anywhere on the wheels how do I know that? Because when you polish these wheels, you have to get very up close and personal with them. You're literally a few inches away from the wheels. You would see any mark on these wheels. So once you have the wheels reversed and once you have the wheels polished, rebuilt and reversed, then of course you get your, your rubber fitted to the tires and you have to have researched and understand what type of rubber you want. I always go with Bridgestone SO2s on the 911. Obviously they have to be Porsche N rated. I always go with Bridgestone SO2. I find that they're a very good wearing tire with very good grip and they're very durable. Taking into account this car does circa 400 miles a year. It's very low mileage and so I need a tire that is going to be reliable, that's going to store well and um, it's, you know, any tire is going to last well with the mileage that I do anyway. Now a lot of you will be asking about the offset. If, you're, if you want some more details about these wheels by the way, please drop some comments down below. Let me know what you think of the wheels and let me know if you think these are the right wheels or whether you prefer the car on the original Turbo Twist hollow wheels. I've still got the original Turbo Twist hollow wheels by the way. They've been fully refurbished and they're sat in the garage, um, stored and they've been stored there for quite a while now but they're in perfect condition and obviously they can go back on the car at any time. Now the offset on these wheels standard is ET56. The offset now is ET41. Now obviously that means that the wheel is pushed out more and that means that you have less of a need or no need in this circumstances with a wide body car to have a spacer fitted on any of the wheels as you can see the wheels completely fill out the arches on the front and if we look at the back the arches are even more filled out now one of the problems that you can get is if you fit a wide tire which the Bridgestone SO2s are which means they actually fit quite wide on the actual rim themselves on the actual wheel then you can have issues with the tires rubbing on the wheel arches now these wheel arches aren't what's called rolled rolled is when you further roll in the edges of the wheel arches to enable fitment of wider wheels these, roll, these arches are not rolled, but what we've had to do, what my mechanic has done to enable the tyres to properly fit underneath these wheel arches without rolling the arches, is to put what's called negative camber on these wheels, on, these, on the rear axle, on both sides of the rear axle, to enable the wheels when suspension comes in. Obviously it's at an angle, so it's going to come in more, and it's going to fit underneath the arches when a suspension is used, when the suspension collapses, when you hit bumps, etc., so that the tyres don't rub on the arches. I believe it's minus two camber that my mechanic used to enable proper fitment of the wheels and the tyres. And I've driven this car a fair bit with this configuration, and there's no problems at all with having minus two camber on the rear wheels. If you look at the wheels and the stance, it gives it even a more aggressive stance. And certainly this is what's classed as an aggressive stance on a 911 and is very much the look that most 911, 993 users search for. So let me know in the comments, guys, what do you think of the car with these wheels? Do you prefer these wheels or do you prefer any other wheels? And if there's any other wheels that you like, maybe some other BBS wheels that you, that you prefer or that you use on your own 993s, on your own Porsches, let me know down below. It'd be interesting to have some discussions with you about the wheels. Obviously, these are the only wheels that I've been looking at. I haven't been looking at any other wheels on the 911 apart from the original standard wheels. And I think that these wheels look awesome. Okay, so now I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about care of these wheels. Remember I said that the wheels had to be polished, so all these rims had to be repolished. 
to, to number one to remove any lacquer that was already there not that you'd really want to do that but because if you're polishing this front face then in effect you've got to polish the whole rim and the whole lip to match it in so it's all matched in exactly the same to get this look now that means that there's no coating on the rims now what does that mean that means that if you get water on these rims then they're going to get tarnished so you've got to be extra careful now one thing i didn't do which i really regret that i should have done and that i will do um, but i haven't had a chance to do it yet and that is to get the wheels fully ceramic coated that means all this ceramic coated and this ceramic coated so that in effect you have that thin layer on there that will wick water away and will prevent any tarnishing. I should have had that done when I had the wheels polished. I just was so busy project managing the whole work that was being done on the car at the same time and holding down the job as well that I just didn't factor it in. And then afterwards I thought I'll get around to doing it. I just haven't got around to doing it yet. Now what that means is that whenever you wash the car, as you will have seen from the washing clip, you've got to be so careful not to get too much water on the wheels. And as soon as you've washed the car, you've got the car wet and you've, you've um, washed the car down with detergent, obviously a mild detergent as I said in the video, then you have to dry the wheels as quickly as possible to reduce the tarnishing as much as possible. Now if the wheels do get tarnished, then you're into repolishing them. Now the product that I researched and that I use is Protex. Now I'm not sponsored by Protex, I'm not sponsored by Rimstyle, I'm not sponsored by BBS. As you're probably aware, currently I have a small subscriber base on my channel. I'm, I'm growing the channel at the moment, so that in effect brings me to please subscribe guys. <laughs> so please share this video, please subscribe and please like the video if you like it of course. Please just share the video. I need to get this user base up and once the user base increases and I get a lot more impetus on the channel, then that will give me the impetus then to create more videos. I've got a lot more content that I want to create about the Porsche. There's a lot more content to come in this series. So getting back to polishing the wheels. Now, assuming you've got the wheels tarnished, what you have to do is you use a small amount of this polish. Now this polish is, is a sealant as well as uh, removing any tarnish and any insects, etc., etc. Now, once you use this polish on the wheels, it puts a sealant on the wheel, which is water wicking. Again, hydrophobic, much like the hydrophobic quality of the PPF Sun SunTech Ultra film on the car. So it helps with getting the water away from the wheels. So when the wheels do get wet in the future or dirty, it's a lot easier to clean them. So you put a very small amount of polish on a on a lint-free cloth, but obviously the cloth. I wouldn't use high grade cloths for the wheels because obviously you can have brake dust um, and all sorts of contaminants in there. You don't want to use good cloths because they'll be ruined as soon as you use them. And you need to use two cloths, one to apply the polish and one to polish off afterwards. As you can see from the design of wheels, the wheels are quite intricate and it means you've got to get polished in all these sections to get the dirt out. Now these are still lacquered there was no need to actually have these center parts polished. So these are still lacquered, so they have a good water wicking capability. But still, to remove the brake dust or the disc pad dust, you still need to get into all these different areas to get the, the dust out. So it's a case of, once you've got the polish in there, it's a case of polishing around in this manner. I'm actually right-handed, I'm doing this left-handed so you can see the wheel because if, I'm, if I go the other side, then the wheel goes in shadow and obviously that's not a good look on the camera. I think you get the idea. And then in with, between the wheel nuts, once you've got polish in there, then you go around this section and obviously you're going around the rims to get the rims clean. Now you don't have to polish the wheels very often if you have a very good approach to wiping them down when you go out in the car. And obviously this car is never used in the rain, never used in winter. Therefore, in general, the only time the wheels ever get wet is when I wash the car. So what I do, when I take the car out in one of its rare occurrences nowadays, but when the car does go out, what I do is I use a very quick technique, which I'm gonna show you now. What I do, first of all, is the key thing, if the, if the wheel is dirty, if the wheel is wet, the key thing is to get the moisture off as quick as possible. So just get the rag around the wheel as quick as possible and get, get that moisture off because the longer that moisture stays on the wheel, the more capability it has to tarnish the wheel and the more likely you are to have to polish the wheel, which takes about half an hour, 40 minutes, 45 minutes, depending on how bad the wheel is, each wheel. Now I've got that down quite quick. The first time I did it, I think it took me about an hour a wheel. It's, it's quite a painful process. So first of all, you're focusing on the outside rims that aren't lacquered, that are bare. Get the water off there and then you can focus on these sections. But you have to be very careful with these face sections as well. So what I do is I get the rag, make sure I've got a good depth of the rag and I get the rag in there. And you can hear there as it's going around the bolts, get the rag around in there with the depth of the rag so that it's fitting inside these little slots and it gets the moisture out. 
and this is what I do when I come back from a, a little uh, drive with the car as well. And then I fit the, the rag inside the rim. Now the fronts are slightly different to the rears. They have a bit of a, a recess in here, which you can really get your finger into. So get your finger in there, wipe it round, and then focus on this main flange section of the lip. Get the, the rag in there. Obviously you have to use quite a bit of impetus and quite a bit of pressure to really get the wheel clean. And then focus on this last section. If you use your finger this way with the cloth, with still a fair amount of depth of the cloth, then what you can do is really get in there on that outside rim and get that clean or get it dry, whichever way you're doing. Now, with regards to the valve, the valve is highly polished as you can see as well. It comes standard like that with the BBS LMs. What you do, you fit the cloth in between the valve to get any moisture out of there and any tarnishing out of there as well. And then where your fingerprints may have, may, where your fingers may have touched the lip, just use the rag again to get your fingerprints off, off the lip and off the rim. So that's the outer lip dried. And then what you do, you just clean, just, just dry or wipe off the polish if you're polishing them from the center parts because you will get polish in there. Then take the rag around with a bit of depth in there again to the center section. Now you have to obviously, as I've pointed, alluded to before, get in here with the rag and polish all these individual sections as well. And once you've done that, to cover off the outside, you can just do this around the outside where it's polished, it will come off and then wipe the rag around like this. Again, a good depth of the rag. I'm not holding it tightly. I'm just leaving that loose to wipe the center around to complete the finish. And then take a look at the wheel. If you see any marks, obviously you focus directly on those marks to finalize the wheel. And that's how you keep BBS LM wheels in this sort of condition, in show quality condition. Painful process, but if you want the look, that's what it takes, guys. You'll also notice the red calipers. The red calipers is a very sought after look across all Porsche officiados, especially for the air-cooled cars. This is a 1997 Carrera S. Now, standard, the calipers are smaller and they're black. I've had the car upgraded with RS spec calipers and rotors and RS uprights or RS wheel carriers, depending on if you're America or in the UK, they're called something different. And I'll be going into those and discussing the upgrades and how they were upgraded and, and what it took to upgrade them in a future video. As I say, these are BBS LM wheels. If you want to know the full specification and model number of these wheels and the full details, email addresses, etc., of the company that I bought them from, from Rimstyle and uh, the actual contact details and such like, drop some comments in below and I'll drop that information across to you. So that's the end of this video. I hope you really enjoyed it, guys. Thanks a lot for watching. And as usual, please subscribe. It's very important. If, I, if you get some impetus behind this series of videos for this channel, which is for the 993, then I'll create a lot more videos. There's a lot more potential and a lot more videos that I can create for this car. I've done an awful lot of updates to this car and I've had the car since 2008, which is 12 years. So there's a lot of work gone into this car to get this look and I'm gonna document it all within this video series. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Please subscribe. Please like the video, that's very important. And please share it to everybody, as many people as you possibly can. And catch you in the next video.